Okay. Hi friends! Today I'm going to be doing a massive book haul. I haven't done one since my birthday, which was back in February. Behind me you can see all the books. Not even. I just burped. Sorry guys. Also, you guys want to know a secret? I look put together on top, but I'm actually wearing sweatpants. Oh! I'm fine. It's fine. Anyway, I'm wearing sweatpants on the bottom, so... Everything is not as it seems. So I have different piles. I have like these are classics and behind them are classics And then this is adult uh, YA middle grade and here we've got thrillers So let's start with the thriller category. Okay, this first one I'm obsessed with the cover so before I even tell you the title or anything I'm just gonna show you the cover. Look at how spooky and eerie that is. So this is called The Supernatural Enhancements by Edgar Santiro. I want to, I think it's Santiro. I know nothing about this other than it's about this mansion that this family inherits, I think. And they're like meeting with a lawyer to go to this place and figure out why they inherited it. They don't know who it came from. That's all I know. Next up, we have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I picked this up as soon as I could because I've been anticipating this all year. It's set in a haunted house and I put that in quotes because I think it's about this girl whose father was kind of like a ghost hunter or like he like wrote books about haunted places and paranormal experiences and she goes back to his house or a house where they filmed that or he did work out or something and I think that it's going to be super spooky so I'm really excited for this one um okay then I got Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix if it's about vampires give it to me I want to read it it's about a book club of these women who don't want to read the traditional books that women are reading. They like true crime, so they are reading books about like Ted Bundy and serial killers. And I think there's like a vampire in their neighborhood, but I don't know how I'm going to do with this because I do not do well with horror. I just don't. I love spooky, I love gothic, but horror? Not so much. So we're gonna see it because I'm pretty sure this is a horror book. Speaking of gothic, next one is one I'm highly anticipating. And that is The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. Purcell, the cover has this really pretty like gold foiling, has this cover with an eye on the inside. Like, it's so spooky. So the reason that I picked this up is just because I have heard really good things about it. I've heard that it's gothic spooky, which is my favorite type of spooky. On the back it says, immersive, meticulous, and reminiscent of the masters of gothic fiction. Not only a compulsively readable ghost story, but a skillful, loving ode to the entire genre. Yep, yeah, I'm excited. Also, that was a YA book, and this next one is a YA book as well, but I put them in this category because they're like spooky books. So it is A Skinful of Shadows by Francis Hardinge. Hardinge? I know I'm not saying that right. I'm sorry. It has this beautiful papery cover, but it also has this beautiful green foiling. I was on Goodreads one day and I saw this book and I saw that it was like blurbed as a girl who is possessed by a ghost or like in this world, ghosts can find their way into other people that have space for them something like that, and that's all I know about it. Next, another gothic book, and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moren Moreno Garcia. And I picked this up because I had heard that it was gonna be really spooky and kind of an ode to the gothic genre. Okay, and then I actually have a library book. It is I'll Be Gone in the Dark, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer by Michelle McNamara. I picked this up because I've heard about it on the My Favorite Murder podcast. I listened to multiple podcasts about the Golden State Killer, but because of that, I went out and got this from the library and I'm really excited to read it. All right, we are done with thrillers. Let's move on to something middle grade. Okay, so I only have three middle grade books, which is not very many for me. I usually read a lot more middle grade, but I've just really been into middle grade classics, so I do have a decent amount of those. First up, I have The Unadoptables by Hannah Tuck. The cover is so pretty. I'm not gonna lie, I picked this up because my favorite narrator on Audible narrates the audiobook, and I saw that a while ago that she would be narrating another middle grade book, so I was like, I need to listen to it. And I got the audiobook, and then I also got the physical book because I enjoyed the audiobook so much. I do think the title is very problematic, The Unadoptables. They could have chosen a better title. But the actual story I really, really enjoyed. It's about these kids who were unable to get adopted. One of them believes that her family still exists, so they go out on this journey to try and find her family based on the clues that she kind of has that she was left at the orphanage with. And it's a story about found family, 
it was just so good. Next up, I have a nonfiction, and I don't really think it's a middle grade book, but I just put it in this category because I didn't know where else to put it. And that is How to Be a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery. Once again, the cover is beautiful. It has all these animals. Every chapter is a different animal. The pictures. It's kind of the author's memoir of like how animals can be examples to us and how amazing animals are. And I, that's the reason that I picked it up. I'm obsessed with nature and animals and plants and all of that. So I needed this because I adore animals. I really, really want a fluffy cow and a pig and a horse. Next up, I adore Doorless cover so much is so fall autumn and it is the magnificent monsters of cedar street by lauren oliver Tell me the cover does not make you think of autumn the first reason i picked this one up was because of the cover and then when i looked at the synopsis it said that it's about this mansion where a father and daughter live and the dad i think he is like a vet but for monsters i think one day her father disappears and she goes out trying to find him and that intrigued me anything that has to do with like a big house and and there's like monsters or strange mythical animals. I was so here for it. I wish I could have a bunch of these as my own pets. Like I think she has a vampire dog. So I'll definitely be reading this this autumn. And then the last one I have been wanting to get forever. And it is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valley. I like a trick to being able to read authors' names well. I love this blurb that Neil Gaiman has that on the front of the book. It says, a glorious balancing act between modernism and the Victorian fairy tale done with heart and wisdom. I don't know anything other about it than her name is September. It kind of has like Victorian fairy tale vibes and that it's about like going on an adventure. That's all I need to know. So those are all the middle grade books for making progress. Let's start the classics. Okay, there are so many. Oh my God, they're heavy, okay. Ooh. Some of these are modern classics. Classic doesn't mean that it has to be published 300 years ago. I have two Nancy Drew books. I have The Mystery at Lilac Inn and Nancy, what's it called? Nancy's Mysterious Letter. I adore amateur sleuth books. Nancy Drew is one of my favorites, but she's actually not my favorite, which leads me to my absolute favorite amateur sleuth that I discovered this year, the Trixie Belden books. So I have a few different editions. This is a vintage one from, I think it's 1954. I found this on eBay. I have discovered a new love for like vintage books. So it's like all old, but I adore the inside. Oh, it's so cute. And then these two are more modern printings. I don't like them as much. The Secret of the Mansion, which is the first book. This is the third book and my favorite one so far. They're about this girl, my girl Trixie. She lives, I think it's like upstate New York and next door, moves this really rich family and they have a daughter named Honey and her and Trixie become best friends. The first couple books there are a few mysteries and they solve them together and they end up creating like this club. Eventually her brothers join in. They live on the farm. They go and they ride horses. They have Halloween parties and sleepovers. And they're just so warm and cozy. These will be in my favorite books of the entire year at the end of 2020 for sure. Next we have Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce. If you like The Secret Garden, you would like this book. This is the 60th anniversary edition and I really liked this cover, which is why I chose this one and why it looks more modern. It's basically about this boy who goes to live with, I think it's his aunt and uncle and he's super prepared for like this really boring summer but then he notices at night i think the clock strikes so many times and he is transported to the past and he discovers this garden and that's all i want to say it's so good next i have this stunning edition of anne of green gables by ellen montgomery i love these editions they're so happy i picked this one up because i honestly didn't own a copy of anne of green gables and i am slowly working on getting all of the books from the series and while we're talking about ellen montgomery i have a new favorite this is called the blue castle so same author as anne of green gables look at this beautiful cover it's about a girl named Valency who is 29 years old. She's not married and her whole family is like, you're gonna be a spinster. And then not really a spoiler, but she gets a note from a doctor saying that she doesn't have that long to live. And she decides that she's gonna live on her own terms now. And it is so good. And I know this isn't a book recommendation video, but I have to recommend this because it's so, so good. I adore it. And then next up, I have one of my favorite books of the year so far. And that is I Capture the Castle by Dottie Smith. Or is it Dodie Smith? I saw this edition on Book Depository and knew that I needed it because I love the pastel pink 
in the green and it's hardcover but it's like a chunky small hardcover and it's so cute it's written in first person it's about a girl who lives in a kind of crumbling castle and her father is a writer but he hasn't written anything for years he just locks himself in his study and reads Agatha Christie books detective novels it has romance it has humor it's so funny just the way that they interact I just adore it so I'm really happy that I own a physical copy now this isn't really a classic, but I put it in this category anyway. It's called The Book of Forgotten Authors by Christopher Fowler. What drew me to this specific book was the fact that I was looking up information about Georgette Hare. Hare? Hare? I love her and I still don't know how to say her name. I noticed that she was in this book and on the back it says 99 authors, their forgotten books, and their unforgettable stories. Because Georgette Hare is an amazing writer and she wrote books set in the Regency period, so same time period as Jane Austen. And they're so good, but I don't see that many people talk about them. So I saw that she was in this book, A Forgotten Author. So I'm really excited to read her chapter. The chapters are super short, like only a couple pages. There are so many authors in here. On the back it says, the perfect guide for finding your next reading obsession. So I'm really excited to look through here and find some new authors, discover some new books, and learn about authors that don't get enough hype as they probably should. Okay, next up I have these two Dover Thrift editions and I am becoming obsessed with these editions. They are so pretty. First up I have Emily Dickinson's Selected Poems and then next I have As You Like It by William Shakespeare. But look at how pretty they are. They're stunning and they're really short. And then while we're on the topic of Jane Austen, I found this amazing edition of Pride and Prejudice at my local thrift store for $2. It is brand new. It has this gorgeous foiling on the front. You can tell it's brand new because the bookmark is still in place, like when you buy a new book and the bookmark is tucked up like that. But let me just show you like some of these end pages. The artwork is beautiful. It just has the most beautiful illustrations throughout the book. It's so my style and aesthetic that I love, so I can't believe I found the most perfect book for me. I always love finding Jane Austen books at used bookstores. It's like my favorite thing ever. And then I also found a vintage abridged edition of Little Women at my local used bookstore. I picked it up mostly for the cover. I love how vintage it is. You guys know that I'm really into like vintage looking books now. It hasn't really been read because you can tell when you open it, but it does have an inscription. It says that this, this book belongs to Clara Tallman. She wrote a little heart next to it. So cute. And while we're on the vintage book train here, I have this book that I am so excited to have found. It is falling apart. It has a library sticker on here because it's an ex-library book, but like you can see, it's absolutely falling apart. This book is $300 on eBay. I think it's a first edition of Thunder on the Right by Mary Stewart. The cover is amazing. I love the mountains and the trees and this little town down there. It's just perfect. Mary Stewart writes like mystery thriller type books and I've never read any of them before, but I have so many on my Audible wish list that I wanna get because I've heard really good things about them. And then I have one more vintage book. It is called The French Lieutenant, A Ghost Story by Richard Church. I have no idea what this book is about, but I love kind of how eerie and spooky the cover is. And it said that it's a ghost story. So I picked it up for $2 at my thrift store. We're done with the vintage classics now. So now I have Anne of the Island by Ella Montgomery. I'm currently reading this book and enjoying it so much. It is the perfect book for autumn. I adore this cover. It's so perfect for fall. It has all of the leaves. It's her and Gilbert. This is the third book in the Anne of Green Gables series. It's Anne's first year at university. And I've heard that this is a lot of people's favorite book in the series. So I have high hopes for this one. I'm only like a few chapters in and I'm already loving it so much. And then up next, I have one that is absolutely beautiful and it is The Great Gatsby graphic novel. The artwork is beautiful. I am obsessed. I love how pastel and just beautiful it is. The Great Gatsby is one of my favorite classics, so this was just an auto buy for me. I can't wait to read it and see how it compares to the movie and also the book. Then next up, I have a book that I feel like was meant specifically for me because it is Jane Was Here, An Illustrated Guide to Jane Austen's England. So I love England and I specifically love the English countryside. It's my happy place. This book is illustrated in the most beautiful way. It has all these pictures of different spots in England, like different places that Jane has been to or that Jane wrote about in her novels. And it's everything I could have asked for in a book. And it's also perfectly my aesthetic as well. And then like, it has all of these places and all of these illustrations. It is so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. So I basically got this as a present 
to my Jane Austen loving self. And that's it for all the classics. So let's do YA. Let's do YA then. Oh, okay. Oh, am I dropping everything today? Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love some of these so much. First up, I have not read this one and it is Joe and Laurie by Margaret Stoll and Melissa De La Cruz. The reason that I was attracted to this book is because I love little women, anything to do with little women, little women retellings. But also when I was younger, I always wanted Joe and Laurie to be together. Now I 100% ship Amy and Laurie, especially since the new film. I really like their relationship and the way they're portrayed in that film. But I'm just kind of curious to see what a retelling would be like with Joe and Laurie together. And then secondly, because we all know that I will literally buy a book just because the cover is pretty, this cover is no exception. So that is why I picked this one up and I'm not necessarily hoping for an amazing story. I'm just kind of curious to see what route they take with this to have Joe and Laurie be together. So we will see. And then I, there's no words. I, I mean, I don't need to like say anything. Uh, about this one. I will always be trash for Twilight. I will always love it and it will always have a special nostalgic place in my heart. And then next we have one that I listened to on audio recently and it is going to be one of my favorite books of the entire year and that is Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillier. Marillier? I'm not sure. I don't think I'm saying that right again. This is a 12 dancing princesses inspired retelling. It's set in Romania and I love books that are set there. I love like anything that has to do with Dracula, vampires. This book does involve vampires and fairies in another realm that the sisters are able to go to once a month. I think it's on full moon where they're able to cross over and go dancing with the fairies all night and then they come home and they have to wait another month until they're able to cross over again. I don't even read that much fantasy and I adored this. Also, I love 12 Dancing Princesses story. I love any type of retelling. So that's kind of why I picked this one up. I love this book with all my heart and soul. I will treasure it forever. Next up, I have an arc that I was sent, which for those of you who don't know, it's an advanced reader copy, but now this book is out so you can go get it if you want. And it is is The Invention of Sophie Carter by Samantha Hastings. Imagine the parent trap meets like Jane Austen or the Bronte sisters. I'm only seven chapters into it, but that's exactly the vibe. They have like this really long red hair. They kind of don't fit in, they're orphans. One of the sisters is sent to go, uh, I think, visit like her rich aunt and she's gonna introduce her into society as a lady so that she can possibly find a husband. But the other sister is like, why are you invited? I'm the one who wants to find a husband. So she's like, okay, let's both go. I'll go out and go to museums and have fun all day while you try to find a husband. So they kind of switch places the whole time. Their aunt really thinks one of them is there, but really two of them snuck in and are living there and they just sneak out. And it's so cute. I don't know the whole story because that's really all I've read so far, but I really, really am enjoying it. I listen to the Parent Trap soundtrack while I read this and it makes me so happy. It's just like a happy book. Next up, I have two of my most recent purchases. I just recently got this one and it is Fable by Adrienne Young. Can we just take a minute to appreciate how beautiful this cover is and how perfect it is for autumn with like the dark colors and the red hair and she is so beautiful. The reason I was drawn to this one is because I've heard that this has like Pirates of the Caribbean vibes because it's about this girl who lives, I think, in this place called the Narrows and she's kind of an outcast. I think she doesn't have a family and she's just kind of fending for herself and she gets passage on this ship so that she can go out and I think try to find her dad and there are stormy seas and it's kind of dark and cold and Pirates of the Caribbean-esque. So that's why I picked this up. I don't know anything about it other than that. And then my last YA book is it's Blood and Honey by Shelby Maharin. Am I saying that right? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm sorry, Shelby. I'm sorry. And I've said this about so many books, but this cover is like so perfect for fall. It's red and dark brown and black and gold. This book involves witches, witch hunters, France. I filmed my reading vlog last year and I want to do another one for this one, like a spooky Halloweenish reading vlog. So I'm waiting, but it's honestly hurting because I want to read it so bad right now. 
Time for the last category and that is adult books. Got a decent amount here. So the first one that I have is one of my favorite books of the entire year, House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book is pure serotonin. It's middle grade for adults. It is pure happiness. Linus Baker is a caseworker and he goes to check on this island where there's like an orphanage type home place for magical youth to make sure that they're being treated right and that everything is, you know, going as it's supposed to. What he discovers it's just, I, I don't want to give anything else away. It's so good. Go read it. Next up, I have this book called The Gown, a novel of the royal wedding. I love anything that has to do with royalty, specifically royalty in England. Whenever there's a royal wedding or anything, I stay up late at night, make some tea, and I watch it on TV. Like, I love royalty and princesses. That is the reason that I picked up this one. Next up, I have two Kate Morton books. I have The Secret Keeper, and then I also have The Forgotten Garden. I love both of these covers because as you know, I adore the English countryside. That's where I know this one takes place and I assume this one too. I saw another booktube video about how Kate Morton writes like kind of gothic type mystery family drama type stories. So that's why I picked these up. I've never read Kate Morton before so I'm really excited to read these ones. Anything, give me anything set in the English countryside, anything that has gothic inspiration and I am down to read it. And then next I picked up this book called The Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper by Phaedra Patrick. I am a sucker for books about old people. I just think they're so sweet and the stories are always so heartwarming. All I know is that it's about a man who has lost his wife and he, I think he goes traveling to learn more about her based on some things that he learns about her past. I'm pretty sure, but I've heard that it's just really heartfelt and will make you feel happy and see if it's any good. It's also set in England, so. Next, I have an arc that I was sent and I'm so happy to have this. It is Jane in Love by Rachel Gibney. On the top, it says, what if Jane Austen traveled to modern day and fell in love? Like you guys know, I adore Jane Austen, no secret there. And I don't necessarily love modern retellings of Pride and Prejudice or Persuasion, but because this isn't a retelling of a book, more just a fictional story about Jane Austen, that is why I'm drawn to it and I'm really excited for it. Plus the cover is so beautiful. Next up, okay, I don't know why this book is in this pile. This is a YA book. Oh, my bad. This is a library book that I recently got and it is called I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. I love the cover. I love it so much. It's about this girl who is a ballerina, I think. She goes to audition for this academy and it just seems like a really cute and fun story. I picked it up because I'm also trying to read more POC books and it just seems like a really sweet story. I also did ballet as a kid, so I think I'm really gonna like this one. Up next, I have a finished copy of Anxious People by Fredman. Fredman. Frederick by Frederick Bachman. Thank you so much to Atria Books for sending this finished copy to me. I am so excited to read it. I've never actually read anything by this author, but I've heard really, really good things. So all I know is that it's about an apartment open house, like a bunch of people are there looking at this apartment and a failed bank robber bursts in and takes a group of strangers hostage. That's all I know. And I think it's gonna be really good. And then up next, I have this book is called The Paris Hours by Alex George. I got this in my book of the month subscription a few months ago. It's pretty short, but it kind of has like a vintage vibe to it. That's honestly why I picked it. Plus it's set in Paris in 1927. That's all I need to know. I think it involves like an artist and then like a doll maker and um, some other people and kind of like a mystery about how they're all connected some way. But I just, I picked it up because I think it's going to feel very like vintage, which I love. And then the last one is The Midnight Watch by David Dreyer, Dyer, a novel of the Titanic and the Californian. And I started this, I'm only a few chapters in, but I think it's about the ship that watches the Titanic kind of sink, but they don't realize what's going on and they don't go to help. It's like a fictionalized retelling. I picked this up just because I love the Titanic. I love reading any type of book or documentary or movie that has to do with the Titanic at all. When I was a kid, I dressed up as Rose for Halloween when I was like seven. I've always just had a really special place in my heart for the Titanic and the story. So anytime I come across a book that looks interesting about it, I always pick it up. And that's why I got this one. And that is it. We are done. I probably forgot some. I always forget books when I do a book haul because they're all over the place. I have them in so many different places. <gasps> 
This is another classic that I got that I'm so excited about. I can't believe I almost forgot it. <laughs> and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is the Wordsworth edition. I got it from Book Depository. I love how simple it is, but it has this gold foiling. The back has one of the famous quotes, which is, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. I have never read Wuthering Heights, but I plan on reading it this October or November. I want it to be kind of cold and spooky outside. I think that'll be the perfect time to read this one. I just, I love this edition. It's so cute and like it's kind of small and it's just like I just I like it a lot so yes I can't believe I forgot that one now we are done thanks so much for watching let me know if you have acquired any new books recently or what book you're most excited to read this coming season and I'll see you in my next video peace out guys bye